Hey, Flip Geometry, one more time. Here we are, Lecture 4.3, Congruence Postulates. We're marching through this, uh, this chapter that focuses on proving triangles congruent to each other. Um, what we're getting into now is kind of the heart of geometry, um, and so I, I hope you're tracking with us. This section begins with an a introduction on how to construct congruent triangles. When I particularly am teaching, Geometry, I don't emphasize constructions very much. I'm, I'm doubtful that you will ever need to do that again in your life. But uh, I do want to show it to you because the book shows it to you, and I don't know who else may be using these lectures. So to construct a congruent triangle, let's start with the triangle that we have here. We already know how to construct a congruent angle. So we would take this line. We would draw a line. We would pick a point to be point A. We... Um, we draw a radius across uh, the, this line and up enough to represent where this line is going to be. Then we will draw, we would draw the same uh, hash line over here on the triangle we're constructing off of. We measure how far from one point of the radius up to that next line. We would mark that distance here and draw a line through it and we'd have a congruent angle. Okay, now. I'm going to do that um, now. I'm going to take the distance down this leg that represents how far it is from A to B, and I'm going to mark it, and that's my next point on the triangle. I'm going to take the distance from A to C, and I'm going to go along this ray. And I'm going to mark it, and that'll be my next point here. Then I connect the dots, and I have congruent triangles. That is a method of constructing congruent triangles. What you just saw is that if I have two sides that are the same length and an angle that is the same measure, then I have two triangles that are congruent. Um, and so we're going to use that in just a little bit. That, in fact, is a postulate called the side angle side postulate, where if I have two triangles and I know that the two, two of the three sides of the triangles are congruent and the angle between them is congruent, then I have congruent triangles. Now, the angle has to be between them. It can't be angle side side or side side angle it has to be side angle side and that order matters the angle has to be between the two known congruent sides if i have that i have two congruent triangles easy way to remember this is sas you can say sas at a christian school in geometry class but you couldn't say ass a christian school in geometry class there's no such thing as angle side side only side angle side Okay. So if two sides and an included angle of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding two sides and included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Okay, That is the side angle side postulate. Let's show you another construction here. If I've got a, a triangle and I want to draw a congruent triangle, another way I might be able to do it is to draw a line and measure the length of one side of the triangle along that, that line. So this is a side. And then I construct a congruent angle. Um, so I've got an angle on this side. And then if I were to construct another congruent angle off of this point, I would have side angle, I'm sorry, angle side angle, right? I've got an angle that's congruent, a side that's congruent, and another angle that's congruent. And I don't have to measure this length, and I don't actually have to measure either of the length of these sides because wherever they intersect, they've cut each other off into a triangle. Okay, so this is a demonstration for the angle side angle postulate that you have two triangles and you know that two of the angles are congruent and that the included side is congruent, then you know that the two triangles are also congruent. So if two angles and an included side of one triangle are congruent to the corresponding two angles and included side of another triangle, then the two angles, two triangles are congruent. Angle, side, angle. And again, it's the order that matters. Angle, side, angle. Okay, those matter. So, what additional information is needed to prove that triangle CAB is congruent to CED by the given congruence postulate by side angle side? I know that these two sides are congruent, they're marked as congruent. I can tell you that this angle is congruent to that angle because they are vertical angles. So, if I'm going to use side angle side, I have side angle, I need side. I would need to know that DC and CB are congruent. If I could find that out, then I would be able to, um, to prove that the two triangles are congruent. So I have side and angle, 
but not side. I would need to have these sides, right? If I were to use angle side angle, okay, once again, I have the vertical angle pairs, and then I would need to be able to say, okay, I have angle, I have side, I need another angle. So I'd need to know that angle A and angle E are congruent. And if I could find that out, then I would know that those two triangles are congruent. Okay. Triangles cannot be proved congruent using side side angle. As I said before, angle side side ASS is a bad word. You can't use that in Christian geometry class. You can't actually use that in any geometry class. So angle side side does not work as a congruent statement. After two triangles are shown to be congruent, the definition of congruent triangles can be used to state that any of the other parts of the corresponding true parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So C, P, C, T, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. You can do that as soon as you have demonstrated that two triangles are congruent using one of a handful of congruency postulates. You now have two of those congruency postulates in your, in your tool bag, um, and we're going to give you more later. So let's look at this figure. Given the figure here, this is two triangles. Prove that angle M is congruent to angle O, angle M and angle O. All righty. Well, let's look at what we have. Um, these two angles are marked as congruent, and these two sides are marked as congruent. So I have a side and an angle. I either need angle side angle, so I'd have to be given that M is congruent to O, and I won't be given that because that's what I'm trying to prove. Or I need angle side angle side, excuse me. Side angle side, I have side and I have angle. I would need to know that LN is congruent to LN. Oh, gee, that's not hard to prove, right? Because of the reflexive property of equality. So let's use that. LM is congruent to LO and MLN is congruent to OLN. That's given to me in the diagram. Now I know that LN is congruent to itself because of the reflexive property of congruent segments. Okay. And so now I say that those two triangles are congruent because of side, angle, side, side, angle, side. And now I can say that M is congruent to O because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, not too hard. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. You've taken your first brave step into the world of triangle congruence proofs, and you will be here for a long time. So make yourself at home, pull up a chair. Let's light a campfire and have a cup of coffee together and talk about congruent triangles. If you have any questions, let me know tomorrow when we see each other in class. Until then, God loves you, and so do I. Have a great night.